struggling to come up with content ideas for Instagram, you're not alone. Today, I'm gonna to share 10 content ideas for music producers that will help you break through the creative block and actually start growing your fan base on Instagram. I hear it all the time. Artists saying they feel awkward on camera, don't know what to post, don't know when to post, and even they're too old to make certain types of content. But here's the truth. None of that has to hold you back. I've worked with hundreds of DJs who felt exactly the same way. And today, we're gonna to break down some myths, I'm gonna show you some content that you can make at home really easily to help you push your music, to help you push yourself, to build an audience, and help you start growing on Instagram. So let's do this. Hey, I'm Graham Farmer, and over the last eight years, I've helped artists grow from their bedrooms to touring the world. Today, I'm gonna to share with you 10 powerful content ideas for music producers. So let's get into these. The first one I wanna talk about is super easy. It's the time-lapse content, which basically shows you in the studio and shows off your music at the same time. It's really easy to make. Okay, so here we have Lars Secker. He set up his camera next to him and his phone on a tripod, and essentially he's put it into time-lapse mode, slide across, time-lapse, and essentially recorded him to the side so you can see the side of his face. But essentially, you can see his computer screen and he's going to be basically recording himself producing his track. He may have already finished the track, but he's going back and kind of making the content. And as you can see, with the time-lapse mode, you just sort of move things around, pretend you're doing stuff, and it essentially looks like you're making your track. It's a great piece of content because you can't actually tell whether you're in the groove or you've done it afterwards. That's the great thing about this. It can be prepared afterwards. You can maybe reduce it down to a few bits of drums on screen and make it kind of look like you're making, making it in the process. But then that doesn't stop the flow of you making making the track so you actually get a better banger. Then what you do is you download the computer, add the track to it, and you can essentially show off your new track really, really simply. The real level up to this content is when you add a visual hook in the term of words on screen as well. Like the sort of thing, what if your track got to the play to this many people? Or I took an artist and gave it a something twist. Or imagine this track at, insert the venue, does it hit and ask the question because then people will engage in the comments. I've actually got a 50 downloadable hooks sheet for you. If you comment the word hooks, I will send you a link to grab that. And it gives you 50 hooks to put on screen that you can try out with different pieces of content, all for free. Number two, how I made that sound. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm a little bit bored of the types of content where it kind of goes, I've made a track breakdown, but it just kind of goes kick, bass, synths, drums, and it kind of steps you through the track and you kind of get the idea of the track. And it still does work as a piece of content, but I just think I'm just a little bit bored of the, it's not actually providing any value. It's more a kind of demo, but it's not really a demo. And I've been wondering for a while, if you did something a bit more micro and you actually just took one part of the track and sort of said, I've done this on this track, you can hear it here, I've done this to it, I've done this to it. This is where it fits in the whole of the track and then it shows it off in the track. So it's a bit more educational. You learn a bit before for it. Other producers can learn from it and it switches it for, into the educational space, but the other previous content is definitely in the entertainment space. I mean, it's maybe interesting for some fans, but definitely not most ravers. I'm gonna set aside the conversation that should producers all make educational stuff, especially if they're only just learning themselves. As I know, I have some producers that are pretty big that watch my content and are a bit further along the road and they could be making that sort of content. And I know you are, and thanks for watching, my friends. Focusing on just one part of a track, could give that little golden nugget, it could help younger music producers that are trying to get to where you're at. Showing some sort of clever sound design hack or a unique way you've used a plugin will resonate with loads of producers. My course member, Wait For Me, has done just that. Look, he's literally just gone in before, after, and he's literally made it as a carousel and it steps through what he's done to each process and it gives you more information. It kind of makes it more engaging. They're simple to follow. They're actually not that hard content to make and it uses the carousel part of the platform to great use. And he's now converting that into his coaching business because he's offering certain services, which is working quite well for him. Number three. IDs as in a carousel. I absolutely love it when a producer shows off a fresh batch of IDs straight from the studio to kind of get your insight, see whether you like them, see what you think of them, but also show off a load of new music they've made because essentially a load of labels might follow them as well and they might get signed just from the IDs on that Instagram post. And they're a good way of showing off music. My course member, rising star, Christina Latchik, she's done just that with a load of music she's just finished. She's used the classic spinning audio, spinning track, which I still absolutely love. It's still really visual still really works, it's really easy to use, and using the website turn.audio makes it super easy to make. And I've just been on there recently and they've had some upgrades, so you can actually still make the carousels like this, but you can also now make them for reels and make them real shape as well, and for stories, which is super great. And as a user, you can click through, and it's super easy, you get to listen to all the tracks, you stay on the platform really long, but in, her, in also from her side, in the caption, she's gonna write which ones do you like. And in the comments, you'll get people going, I like one, I like two, I like three, I like four. Super engaging content, really easy to make. 
The other one is when you mix it up and add your face, and then you add some IDs from maybe the CDJs or the speakers. My cast member, Viv Castle, he's done just this, and it's kind of like showing off using the CDJ. Simple, again, simple to film, play it for your phone, record it for your phone, and also then it kind of gives away the, the titles of the tracks as well. Number four, a day in a life content. This content takes a little bit more planning, editing, and arranging. But as we've seen from reality TV, people love watching this content. People are nosy. They love watching behind the scenes content and seeing the routines that you go through, what's going on in your studio, what you have to go through on a day as being a DJ and a producer. It really does give a deeper connection with your fan base. So Beth is a DJ that we've been supporting on Data Transmission a bit. I'm really into her sound and what she's doing as a DJ. And she's made this great day in a life content. She talks through her day. She talks all the things that go on in a day from kind of making music to recording sets to even when she's got to go to work and her day job, chatting out promos. It's really an engaging piece of content. This also has a bit of the time-lapse content we spoke about earlier. And you can see where she's kind of selecting through her promo. She uses the time-lapse there. And you could then use that as a separate piece of content. I think if I was making this content, I'd literally write down a little bit of a plan of what's going to happen and what I want to film and what things I need to film when I'm making the content, what parts of the day, what I've got in my day, and write a little storyboard of what, con what that's going to mean in that content. I'd also do exactly like Beth's done. She's captured each of the videos and not spoke in any of the videos and then narrated over the top of that content because then you haven't got to worry about whether you're going to make a mistake and have to refilm stuff. You can literally just film and then add the voice over afterwards much easier and less headache from a DJ producer point of view. Number five is a real talking head video where you're going to explain something, you're going to announce something, you're going to tell something. And talking to the camera is perfect for engagement. It makes your audience feel included in the process, which can build a stronger connection. This content is great for announcements. You can see like my cast member Vib is doing here. He's announcing his new record on spinning, and it's also great for big tours and gigs, but I wouldn't do an on-day announcement of something that's coming up today. What happens when you drop a reel like this? It takes about 12 hours for the content to start getting into all the audience. So it might be that you've already done the gig by the time the reel reaches that audience. Always also remember when you're making reels, they're gonna go to some new fans. So include, like Viv has done here, introduce the track, but also play a bit of the track so that new fans who don't know who you are can hear the music and hear what you're announcing. And then they might become a fan. Always write a little mini script when you're making this sort of content so it's not kind of stumbled. You have your plan and you have what you're gonna say and you hit the markers you're trying to make for that piece of content. You have a hook, you have a call to action and you know what that content's gonna be about. If you're struggling to make that sort of content and need more help with Instagram, then definitely subscribe to this channel because that's what we do on this channel all the time. I tell you how to use Instagram as DJs and music producers and give you, like this, content ideas for DJs and music producers. Number six, the story behind the record. I'm definitely loving using carousels to tell stories and tell people what's going on with something. Because what happens is you can tell it over multiple slides and you can tell the story as you slide through it and can carry on the story, which then gives you so much space to tell the story in full. If you think each carousel slide has 60 seconds of potential video or images and you can mix mix the media up and then tell the story through those slide throughs and people will keep going and keep going and keep going and once they've done a few they're invested and they're in and they're going to go with you to the end which means it keeps them on that post for ages and it gets that post loads of potential reach and this is what Loz has done here with this post he walks through how his big release came about, how it got on Radio 1, and you slide through and follow it through the journey. And it's super interesting and had loads of reach. It also gets tons of comments because carousels get tons of comments naturally. And he's done a kind of voiceover to, again, to make it easier for him to narrate the content. Number seven, ask your audience a question. Not all content needs to be overthought. Some can be just simple questions to your audience to find out more about what they like. These type of posts or stories are great for engagement and give you loads of data about your audience and what they do not like, what they do like, and can just kind of be that natural kind of conversation between the audience. It can also spark ideas for future content. And like I said, they can live on polls or they can just live on stories. If you're doing it as a post, they can be super simple like this. Look at Defected, just a single post. Name a 10 out of 10 house song, one song that defines the genre for you. And that's it. And look at all the comments. Yes, they've got a big audience, but it's got tons of comments because people are going to get involved in that. Drum Code have done something similar. What year did you go to your first rave? And it finds out more about the audience. This type of post is going to find out what age groups are in their audience because everyone's going to comment with the year they went to a rave and that's essentially going to give you how old each of their audience is. Some are going to put 80, some are going to put 90, some are going to put the last five years, the last two years. And it's going to give them a good range of who's in their audience. Number eight, bootlegs and edits. I love a bootleg. I love a bootleg for growing an audience and I love a bootleg for growing an artist when they're really small. It 
helps fans find you because essentially they know the original track, they'll listen to the original track, they'll click on the original track when they're scrolling down things and go, I like the original track, what has this person done to it? And they're either gonna vibe with you and become a new fan or they're not gonna vibe you and then swipe off. You're not worried about those ones, you're worried about the people that wanna become your new fans. One of my course members, Josh Samuel, put a bootleg up that he did of a Daft Punk track and, and another track and it was a mashup, but then it got downloaded by Michael Bibby and was played all over the summer and we had loads of content from him playing at Ushuaia a couple of seasons ago and it was epic content for us. I like what Bessie does here on his reels. They always start, let's make a banger. And he actually keeps the reels in the studio and just keeps them in reels tab. So you can follow the flow of multiple reels and see what he's done previously and what's happening is the next part of the reel. And you again, you follow the story of the track through multiple reels. It's engaging, it's got a hook and you wanna watch to see what's going on with the track. Your followers also will stick around to see if he finishes it and what happens to it along the journey. It's kind of telling the story through multiple pieces of content, which I absolutely love. See, shall I finish it? And again, you're gonna get that engagement in the comments. Number nine, demo versus final. People love a transformation. They love seeing something at the start and seeing something when it's finished because it shows the journey from the demo to the final and it can inspire producers to see what happens before things are polished. Okay, Josh Samuel here. He's done it before finding a vocal. This shows the vocal and finding the vocal. It's super interesting. It used his own vocal and kind of what he did it to, to make this vocal for this track that actually then got signed. He talks through the process, like I was saying earlier, a micro part of the process. And it's a really good use of kind of talking through what he's doing, which is then really valuable. You could also do like a demo where you record the first day of making a track and then you show the final version and it's like showing the two off. This is where it started, this is where it ends. I love that sort of thing. But it's about remembering when you're making a track, the end of day one, just to record a few seconds of it and put that in the bank and save it for when you finish the track later on and doing that every time you do something new. It'll take like five to 10 seconds to record something and then record it at the end. Number 10, shouting about your wins. I flipping love shouting about wins. Whether they're big, whether they're small, I tell all our course members to shout about their wins and we do it weekly in our groups, in our Discord. For me, a win is a win is a win. Whether it's, you know, a one nil win away in a muddy ground and you just eke out a really terrible performance, but you get the win, that's still a win. And whether you win five nil in a massive stadium and the biggest crowd and you're playing amazing, both are still a win. And the same when it comes to dance music. So share those wins and share them on social media. And that's what Shay De Castro's done here. She's just had a really big win. She had a release on Mousetrap, massive congrats to her. And it's had loads of great response and she's sharing that and talking about her wins. And she does it super humbly. And a really nice piece of content. Sharing those successes builds that credibility with your audience. You're doing stuff, you're going somewhere. You always see it, so and so smashing it right now. That's because they're sharing what they're doing and you're telling people and you're promoting to people what's going well with you at the moment. And that's what really works on social media. But from the other side, for those of you who are not sharing wins and not getting wins, remember, people are only sharing their wins. They're not sharing all the bad stuff they're going through. So just keep grinding those that are, those that you're not getting when you need to. Keep grinding, you, are, you will get there. I love what Shay's done here. It's a super nice piece of content, really bright and really good content. Still need more help with your content and more tips for your content. Well, in this video, I break down some of your content and your pages to show you what I would change, what content I'd make differently, and how I would build these pages better. And it's gonna give you the tips that from them, and you can see where they're going wrong, and it's gonna help you with your own content, no doubt. Go and check out that video next, and I'll see you in there. I'll see you very soon.